Well, what is a server? All this while, I mean, the first thing which comes to your mind when I say server is that, well, yeah, I mean, if you belong to the software industry or you don't belong to it, but most of the people, the first image that comes to the mind when somebody says server is that, well, uh, but as if we go by the definition, the server is a software. When I say software, it's a computer program, okay, which understands your request. Let's say, let's go back to our standard example, Gmail application. You clicked on delete an email, okay? You have selected an email, clicked on delete button. So what you're doing, you're sending a request, okay? So the server should understand that request saying that, oh, this guy wants to delete an email. That's the first thing it will do. And the second thing is it needs to process the request, which means that it needs to get that email deleted. Okay, so that program that we are talking about, which is a server, will it delete that email? And the third one is it sends the response back to the client, saying that, oh, this mail has been deleted. Okay, this is the server. Okay, if it is a program, why is the people calling a piece of a hardware a server? Or you might be hearing this uh, name, uh, word called server rooms, or uh, you know, when you go and search on Google for server, they show all those equipment. Why is that? So as per the definition, it was a software or computer program, but over the years, okay, what happened is this program needs to reside on a particular hardware, okay? The program by itself cannot run. It needs to be installed or deployed on a particular hardware. So they started calling that hardware server as well, okay? So going forward, <coughs> when I say server, uh, it could be a software, it could be a hardware, or it could be both depending upon the context. So, you still didn't understand this. I'll take an example, a very simple and a silly one. Well, you go to a restaurant and you need to order, let's say, a biryani, which is a popular dish over here in India. So, you'd call up a server. Uh, incidentally, those people, you know, you call them servers as well, at least in India. So, you call the guy. Uh, with a server and you would order, you would put your order saying that you want that biryani. So that server needs to understand your request saying that you need a biryani and he needs to process the request which means that he has to go into the kitchen have that biryani done and finally sends the response back means he needs to get that biryani onto your table. So the computer server and the hotel server are pretty much do the same thing but the computer server it's a program. Okay, and here you're not ordering the request, you're, you're, you're sending a user request. You're, you're not ordering a food, but you're sending a user request uh, from the client. It could be uh, a request to delete an email, a request to compose an email, a request to check your inbox, a request to create a folder uh, on, on, on the Gmail. Uh, it could be a request to change the theme uh, and all that. So I hope you understood what is a server. So uh, we understood that um, the software is can be a server and also the hardware on which this software resides, you can call that also a server, okay? So when we're talking about this hardware, uh, anything which has a processing capability like a CPU and it has some storage like your hard disk and a RAM, you can call that as a hardware. Again, I'm repeating anything which has a processing capability or in other words, anything which has a CPU, which has a RAM and uh, which has some 
hard drive to store the stuff, you can call that as a hardware. So the next question comes to mind is I have a desktop. Can I use that as a server? Why not? You can certainly use that laptop or a desktop that you have as a server because this laptop or, uh, or the desktop do have all these three, which is the CPU, RAM and hard drive. As long as that software that we are talking about is deployed or installed on this laptop that you have or the desktop that you have, as long as you're installing it, you can call that as a server. Then why can't uh, all these applications like Facebook or Gmail or Flipkart or Amazon uses the desktops uh, and uh, mm, uh, laptops, desktops or uh, laptops as a service. The only problem is these desktops or the laptops has a limited processing capability, which means that the CPUs, uh, the capacity of the CPUs is not that great. At the same time, they have limited uh, RAM as well, uh, because of which will not be able to host such big applications. But small, small applications, we can certainly deploy or host on this uh, desktops and uh, get it work. The initial part of my career, I worked for a very small company. And there, uh, you have these desktops, they used to use that as servers. A normal desktop which uh, i3 or something like that uh, with the 8 GB RAM and uh, it's a desktop uh, they used to host a small applications uh, which we call that as a uh, internal uh, application for that company uh, to apply leaves or uh, to get updates of the company and all that so it was that kind of application and, uh, and that application was hosted on that desktop and whenever the application was not working, you know, there was this guy who used to go and then restart that particular desktop and the application used to, you know, run, it was up and running. So I'm just telling you, keep uh, telling you that uh, a server need not have to be, uh, 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 don't imagine that, you know, it's big and uh, you have to have uh, several rooms and uh, so much hardware everywhere. Yeah, you do have that kind of servers, but if the application is small, not many people are using it, you can have, you can make your desktop a server as well.